so I've been a drug user for a while and um, I would pick up my drugs from them um, so a few times a day I would meet them and get the drugs and I'd talk to them and eventually they popped the question could we stay at yours and um, at the time I all I was thinking about was the drugs nothing else and agreed to it yeah I was on heroin and crack at the time I was using that daily they just saw the opportunity there and they asked me to stay at the flat which I agreed to because all I wanted was the drugs they kept me in debt with them just so they could stay there and then yeah taken over the flat basically a lot of them would come up sometimes carloads of them making me feel quite intimidated um, they would act quite rowdy around the flat and they would always try and make sure that I knew that they had the power and um, if anything went wrong that they would step up and do something about it they always tried to make you feel inferior to them yeah they basically just come from another area they would look around for people who have got flats once they spot one they'll offer them drugs um, to stay in the flats and once they've got that, they're in. Uh, and then it's uh, quite an oil machine. They have people sit there all day, every day, just doing the chopping. Someone will be out working, serving up people. They'll have people bringing the drugs up from the county and taking the money back. And this will all be on a daily basis. And then, uh, yeah, they make quite a lot of money out of it. They're looking for people who are vulnerable. They're looking for people who are not in a position to fight back or anything like that. They just want to take someone that's easy. And they will show that they've got the power to take over. Once they get in, they'll be all sweetness and everything will be great. And they'll all be making laugh and giving you drugs left, right and centre. But once they get their feet in and they're comfortable, that's when it will change. And they'll start being a bit aggressive. There'll be violence. They'll, um, they'll just run your flat down to get what they need and they'll move on to the next one. There was always a lot of them, and they'd turn up whenever. You didn't know when they'd turn up. And you've got 14 lads in your flat, you don't want to do nothing. You just sit there, and sometimes they'd go out and uh, be violent towards people that owed the money and that. So they made sure that I knew the consequences if things didn't go their way. Um, so, yeah, I didn't really feel like I could say, look, you have to go now. And it's just a perpetual cycle and you just can't do anything about it. You don't feel like you've got an option, so you just take more and more drugs. And yeah, they just have control. And uh, it wasn't until the police knocked at the door one day and um, were then aware of something that was going on. They didn't know exactly what was going on, but they knew that something was going on. And eventually they kept coming back each day, which I felt was great because it then gave me like a, an ounce. I didn't feel like I was trapped anymore because they weren't comfortable with the police knocking every day. So then eventually they moved on to somewhere else. Um, but they were still in the local area and they would always be checking on me to see if I was still getting calls from the police and that. Just having the police come around every day, some people would probably look as if they're trying to nick you, but they're also there to try and help you if you're willing to take that help. And I was willing to take that help at the time, I think. Because I wasn't willing to lose the flat. I didn't want to be homeless. I've been there. I've done that. They were really nice to me. They asked if there's anything I could do for me. Is there any help for me? And they did in the end. They did a lot for me. Which is why I'm where I am at the moment. Well, they engaged with the council to let them know the situation, what was going on. Council worker came round, Monica. And she also asked me what help she could do for me. I told them I was trying to get into rehab. Eventually, the funding came through for rehab um, and Monica and the police and the drug service worked together to help me get to that point. Monica's been working with me continuously since I got out, um, helping me to get into a dry house, to give the flat up and then eventually get another flat somewhere else. So as long as I was engaging with her, I think the help that she could give me was endless. I think. If you're in that situation, you can reach out. It doesn't feel like you can at the time, but there is help out there. It's a very big thing just to go to the police or the council because there's the fear you're going to be kicked out. But I think you just have to bite the bullet.
if you get honest with them and tell them how things are, they will look after you. You've got nothing to fear. Um, they will do anything to make sure that you're safe. So I've been out of treatment for two weeks now. I'm in a dry house. Um, it's a really good house. It's a safe house. I've um, done a lot of work on myself while I was in treatment. The police, the council and the drug service have all worked together to help me get into a dry house. I'll be doing six or nine months in there and then I'll be rehoused with the council in another place.